Walker. Lucky. Finds an open Rex Norton inside the 30. Oh boy, Norton took a shot at the 26 yard line. He gets up a little woozy. First down, Legends. Walker against the blitz, got to get the play away, and he's sacked. He's just not recognizing. He's just not recognizing these Jamal blitz packages. Is, Jamal is blitz from cover two then. Second and 14. Walker again, facing the same blitz. He swings it outside, pass caught. Iva, and out of bounds, that stops the clock for 2.40 to go third down and four. Bandits APF 2K8 in the chat asks, will we get to see a Cam and S.A. Corky Broadcast booth part two anytime soon. Any uh, thoughts on that matter? We're, we're, we, we will see. There, there's a chance uh, that could happen. Third and four at the 20. Four receivers, two to either side. Another third down attempt here for Walker. And Walker swings it outside. That's the first down to the 15-yard line. Walker again back to pass. He's going to the end zone and it's knocked away. Well, that would have been really disheartening if he would have thrown a pick on that. And Kaleka knocks it away. He's had a great day. Koma Kaleka. Dan, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say he's a, he is a tenacious ball hawk. I mean, you put the ball in there, he pretty much thinks it's his. We'll get a reset on the internet, and it's not been the greatest connection uh, during this broadcast, so I apologize for that. We'll reset it for the next game. As Walker pass is caught for a first and goal down to the three-yard line. We're not going to mess with it now as Minneapolis has this game in control. Walker back to throw, and to the back of the end zone, it's knocked away. That was Kaleka again. I, I know the offense has been great for, for the Maulers, but in... Uh, just for kicks, because the offense gets the player of the game. You know, somebody on the offense gets player of the game every week. Do you, do you give him the game ball today? I would say so. I mean, so he had the kickoff return, and he's been stellar back there on defense. Let's go, D. Let's go. They're going to go with the three. Walker trying to punch in their first touchdown since the first quarter. That's not going to get it done in the pursuit. By the Maulers forces us down to the two-minute warning. Third goal, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Honolulu Legends Radio Network. Prepare yourself, the storm is here. This is 99.5 AMNOS The Storm, home to legends. Third and goal from the three. 21 points in the first quarter for Honolulu. Three the rest of the way, just in case you're joining us late. Play action for Walker. Walker back toward the end zone is an open man. It is a touchdown for Honolulu. Caught by Lawrence Kirkland on the left-hand side. And finally, the Legends punch it in. That was a very odd route, but we would have liked to have seen some of that in the second, third quarter. How would you describe that route? Did he just run out of room back there? I think that, that's what it looked like. It looked like it was an out and up, and he just, he shortened it. Again, 6.30 p.m. Central, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, game of the week. Zach Parker against Joe Dazzo. And his father and son Dazzo combo go for their sixth win of the season. They take on the Orlando Intimidators, who are poised for an upset. Uh, Corky, I don't know if you saw the Minneapolis-Orlando game, the 55-45 game. Uh, Kaleka had a kickoff return in that one, too. Uh, they were the team that, that gave Minneapolis the toughest challenge. Um, and I'm sure uh, I'm sure they'll give the Crabs uh, every bit of it uh, and as Honolulu was onside kicking. And he's always in the cover. If I was the crowd, I would uh, I would definitely be uh, be worried about the Orlando. They they can bring it, and uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't hang my hat on that five and one record. 
So the playoff scenario from the from the bottom of the standings up to the top, the Cleveland Vipers one and five, the Oklahoma City Renegades and the Honolulu Legends are both two and four. Uh, so that leaves five teams left. The New York Knights are three and three. Marconi pump fake down the middle, caught inside the twenty, and the Legends are going to exhaust their timeouts. Pass caught by, uh, well, that was actually the backup quarterback. Marconi's been pulled. Mark Blake with the uh, pitch and catch down the field outside of the uh, reach of a linebacker. Well, there's your answer. If Rocco was pulled. <laughs> um, the, the Knights are 3-3. Three and three. The uh, Bulldogs are 2-3. and three. The Orlando Intimidators are 3-3 three and three as well. So uh, just a jumble up behind Baltimore and Minneapolis who have pulled well ahead so far this season. Orlando can keep that close um, with, a, with a victory later uh, this evening. And Blake is going to be sacked. Again, more pressure for the Legends. Going to bring up the second of 16. That's Larry Henderson's third sack. He now has four and a half in the season. That leads all uh, all defensive linemen. You must have heard me talking about this $6 million contract. But with the, uh, with the advent of Blake uh, or Rocco being pulled, I guess it has to be said. Turn out the lights, the party's over. It's, uh, you know, I get crucified every time I try to sing on a broadcast, so I hope they don't do the same to you. Uh, second and 16, Mark uh, Blake back to pass. Blake going to the end zone. It's, oh, 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 what a play! What a play by Jim Fierro! That was the play of the game! Statue of Liberty death! What a, what a baller there in the end zone! Look at that, a uh, second look at this one. And he knocked the ref over in the process. What a play. I guess Blake hadn't heard about Fierro. Sec yeah, yeah, no kidding. Second uh, interception of the day for Fierro. Uh, easily the most impressive of the afternoon. Quite possibly the most impressive uh, interception of the season. That was an incredible play late in garbage time uh, for, the, for the people that tuned out uh, right. due to the blowout. They really missed a good play there. Walker standing at his goal line going deep. He's got a man. That pass is caught by Kirkland. And Kirkland is... Inside the 50 as the Maulers, or I'm sorry, the uh, Legends used their last time out. And Kirkland able to break free for some garbage time yards on a double move against Dorsett. Where was this at earlier? Wow. And we've seen this from time to time out of the Maulers. Their defense sort of kind of seems to stop playing. Uh, after they get up so so far, and the Mahler defense not the best. They give up over four of uh, over 35 points at least per game. Um, but uh, but yeah, nice throw from Walker. Uh, give him his hands quick. Back to throw again over the middle. Pass. Four yard pickup under 90 seconds to go. Well, in defense of the Mahler, well in defense of the Mahler defense, it's. Well, as soon as they sit down, oh, they scored again. we got to go back out there. That pass is picked off. Interception by Kevin Walker, and that puts a sour note on this drive. And on the day for Kevin Walker, he's been battered and beaten as Dewan Tuyasasopo makes the play for the Maulers, and that's really his first true mistake of the day for Walker in the drive ends in a turnover. Such a shame, too, because uh, the Legends came in with such promise. That first quarter was memorable. I really thought we were going to have a shootout today, and, it, of course, it turned into this. T.J. Cagasavell is telling you to keep your day job after singing. See, I told you, they hate it. They hate, they hate the singing. I, I like to give them uh, fits uh, and, and, and do it from time to time just to make them mad, but... Uh, you know, you can't, uh, you can't always give the people what they want. you got to give what you what you want sometimes. Um, no duets in the future, though. That's the last time I try to satisfy you, TJ. <laughs> Second down and 12. Uh, one more kneel down for the Maulers, and Dan and Peter will take this one away. A 27-point victory for uh, Minneapolis. Uh, and then uh, we'll come back uh, for the recap and get your final thoughts, Corky. Uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll pack it up and get ready for uh, Baltimore and Orlando, which hopefully should provide uh, uh, a much uh, better uh, game for, for everybody. We'll also get that uh, internet connection reset. I do apologize so much for 
for that not being uh, as, as good as it normally is. Uh, but uh, Dan and Peter, the uh, the floor is yours, my friends, as uh, the Mauler has improved to 7-0, and a 58-31 victory over the Legends. And that is going to do it for this one. The Maulers come out on top, 58 to 31. With this one in the books, let's take a look back at some of the action. So, the ball game is over. Let's take a quick look back at how it went with our post-game show. Let's get started in this one early in the third quarter. Number five would put this pass right where it needed to be. An eight-yard touchdown for the visitors. The Maulers moving ahead big and now lead by 20. Midway through the third, all at their own 46. Number five would find his target on this one. A 29-yard play that set up a visitor's touchdown. Still midway through the third quarter, the Legends down by 27. Number 33 is going to bounce this one to the outside and look at the execution up front. And he's in the clear. They finally get on the board and are now down by 24. The Maulers now in the fourth quarter. Number five would find his target on this one. A 28-yard play that set up a visitor's touchdown. The Maulers out in front, 55 to 24. Number five would find his target on this one. Unfortunately, the drive stopped shortly afterwards and they had to punt it away. Midway through the fourth, the ball at their own 33. Number five would find his target on this one. That set up a 27 yard field goal. Late into the fourth quarter, the Legends trailing by 34. Number nine needed to be on target here, and he was. They close in a little. They are now down by 27. The Maulers still late in the half. Number 25 is reading the quarterback's eyes all the way, and he's able to get his hands on this one and picks it off. The Maulers up 58 to 31. Number nine would air it out on this one, and he would find his man. Big play by the offense, but they couldn't make good and threw it away on an interception later in the drive. And that will do it. The Maulers serve up a blowout, 58 to 31. Let's take a moment to recognize the 2K Sports player of the game. Number five elevated his game like he always does. What a performance, and I have no doubt that this isn't the last time he'll showcase his talent. We'll be hearing much more from this guy as time goes on. For my partner, Peter O'Keefe, this is Dan Stevens saying goodbye until next time. 58-31, a final here uh, in Honolulu. The Legends go down, uh, drop to two and four, and... Uh, their playoff hopes are fading as they lose their second straight blowout. Uh, 661 total yards for Minneapolis to 404 for the Legends. Uh, Marconi, brilliant again, 51 of 59, 637 yards, but only six touchdowns today. How about that? Wow. Uh, uh, 94 yards for Noel Kreis, who was up and down today, did score twice. Abaratsevo, 17 catches, 272 yards, and four scores. Cooley did not have a touchdown today, uh, which I believe might be the first game of the year where he, yeah, he's had he's had two at least two touchdowns in every game this season. None today. Didn't matter. As Donald Miller had two. Uh, Campbell didn't have any either, but did have nearly 100 yards receiving. And Billy Joe Gatlin had nine tackles in a pass defended. So, uh, Corky, uh, your your final thoughts on this game and your first uh, game as an analyst? Well, I, it, the game turned out as I expected it would. I, I, first quarter, I, I, I thought that the legends would continue on and, and make a fool out of all of us. But the models are just going to be hard to, hard to stop this year. And that's, that's really, they are just 
they are primed, loaded, and ready to go. And as for my uh, uh, try as an analyst, I, I enjoy it. I mean, who couldn't? I mean, sitting next to the legendary Cameron Irvine, I mean, you carried me the whole broadcast, so it's not like I was doing anything special. So, yeah, I had a blast. Uh, no problem, my friend. Thanks for the compliments. From all of us here at Honolulu, I'm your play-by-play -play Cameron, uh, Cameron Irvine. This has been a presentation of the Simulation Football League. We'll be back on the air at 6.30 Central, 7.30 p.m. Eastern for the game of the week. Until then, get some dinner. We'll be back on the air in a few minutes.